The emergence of smart cities is enabled by new technology, primarily large bandwidth data transmission channels and artificial intelligence. It is the development of AI that allows us to enhance approaches to infrastructure management and automation of business processes at any level. At the end of day one of Global Impact Conference, we will discuss the ethics of using AI technology as well as the possibilities of big data in ensuring a livable environment and well-being of society as a whole. AI finds its ways into all areas of our lives, actively influences the interaction of consumers with brands, helps optimize logistics, detect fraud, conduct research, and even analyze the level of happiness of human individuals. The potential of AI and big data economy will be the topic for our next session, Artificial Intelligence for the Sake of Humanity. We are going to talk to our next speaker, research fellow and faculty member of the Data Warehousing Institute, the TDWI and Teradata Chief Technology Officer Stephen Brobs on how to ensure productive collaboration between AI and humanity. This talk is about the coexistence and collaboration between man and machine. I'm going to talk about what are the challenges and what are the benefits of this approach towards deploying artificial intelligence. There's a common perception that deep learning is AI magic. But the reality is that deep learning is AI math. We're using advanced mathematics to simulate a multi-layer neural network in order to predict and classify using data. Now, the problem is that most people get their primary knowledge about what is artificial intelligence from Hollywood. Hollywood is not a particularly good or accurate source of information. People think of Terminator and Skynet and using data and, and machines taking over the world. The reality is machines cannot think. Now, Alan Turing, a mathematician from England, I think had a much better way of asking the question, can machines do what we as thinking humans can do? And the answer to that question is yes, sometimes. I will propose to you that in the future, most decisions that humans make in four seconds or less will be made by machine learning algorithms, will be made by software using data to drive decisions. We can see that in self-driving cars. Humans make most decisions to put their foot on the brakes or turn on the signals in the car in a very small number of seconds. Now, I recently taught my nephew how to drive a car. And I will tell you that humans are not good drivers of cars. Software can do better. And most decisions that are made with machine learning will be faster and will also lead to higher quality, higher safety when using machine learning. Increasingly, with advanced algorithms in machine learning, deep learning specifically, we are able to outperform humans. For example, in medicine, if a doctor looks at an x-ray image of your chest to diagnose whether you have pneumonia or not, and if software using machine learning looks at the same x-ray to make the same diagnosis, the machine learning software will perform better than the doctor. I want my next doctor to be an AI algorithm. There are many applications. In this example, we have a high-tech manufacturing company that has nearly a million variables that describe the processes for creating high-tech devices. And they can use deep learning with inputs of this data to detect and predict when there will be quality problems from their manufacturing lines. They can use this to prescribe interventions and they will increase their yield and reduce costs by using these advanced AI algorithms. So much data that a human 
could never process the data fast enough or make decisions fast enough to improve the manufacturing processes in real time. AI has superpowers. AI superpowers include the ability to process more data than a human could ever consume, the ability to work with highly dimensional data, the ability to process with outlier data and, and not come to incorrect conclusions. Machine learning algorithms don't have to sleep at night. They can learn much faster. They can learn 24 hours a day. And the computation that software with advanced hardware can do is much faster than a human can ever do. But humans also add value. Humans bring to the table the ability to reason and adapt. Humans being creativity to the table. So when we think about artificial intelligence, sometimes people think AI is automating intelligence. And in some cases that will be true. But in many cases, augmented intelligence will be a better approach. The example that I gave you earlier in healthcare where a doctor is diagnosing from the x-ray image, they will typically get it right depending on the circumstances about 95% of the time. There's a 5% error rate. And that's why it's good to go to a second opinion when you're getting a diagnosis of something very important. The machine learning software gets it right about 97% of the time. So that's better. But if the human and the machine learning software work together, they will diagnose correctly about 98.5%. So it's much better when the machine and the human work together. You get better outcomes with augmented intelligence for many critical applications of machine learning software. Again, there are many applications across many industries. If you look at sensor data or IoT data, the Internet of Things, feeding that data in and the ability to analyze that data and predict what actions will happen next, which machines will fail, where will we encounter a safety incident? What is the path of clickstream data that is going to lead to the purchase of a product by a consumer? Almost every industry will be able to make use of machine learning software to make it better. And it's especially true when you have highly dimensional data, like image data, text data, video, time series data, Machine learning software augments traditional analytics in a very, very powerful way. This is going to bring on the fourth industrial revolution. I will tell you that Teradata customers that I've worked personally with have embarked on use of machine learning to do lots of amazing things. At Volvo, they're using advanced analytics with machine learning and deep learning to create self-driving cars and trucks. We have at Barclays the ability to create customer care bots purely from software. You have the ability to do telemedicine at Kaiser Permanente. You have automated diagnosis and interventions to recover errors from machines at Siemens. Most of these are operating in real time. And the ability to do this in real time with more accuracy than humans leads to better outcomes. Now, when you look at this fourth industrial revolution, the question that I sometimes get is, well, yeah, but aren't a lot of humans going to lose jobs? Well, that's in fact true. If you look, for example, within the United States, a very large percentage of males that do not have a college education drive for a living. They drive taxis, they drive Ubers, they drive trains, they drive forklifts, they drive many things. And within the next 10 years, self-driving cars will start to eliminate those jobs. But new jobs will be created. A futurist, Jerry Kaplan, likes to say, artificial intelligence does not put people out of business, it puts skill sets out of business. New jobs will be created. New jobs that require mathematical skills and statistical skills and data management skills. New jobs that require reasoning and creativity that AI algorithms cannot have to augment the intelligence that the machine learning brings to us. 
Now, one of the important contributions of machine learning is to reduce bias. When humans make decisions, for example, to approve a credit loan to an individual, they have bias. They might be biased against certain genders, certain races, certain ethnicities. If we're using mathematics, algorithms with deep learning, are we getting rid of that bias? We would like to think so, but it's not quite true. The bias that humans have get introduced into the AI algorithms. The humans that create those algorithms by virtue of the data sets that they choose to use, by virtue of how they frame the problem, will very often introduce bias. There are over 180 forms of bias that have been identified in humans, and many of those biases will actually translate into the AI algorithms. We can reduce bias, but we will not eliminate bias when we go to AI algorithms for decision making. Kathy O'Neill, who is a mathematician in America, has written a book called Weapons of Math Destruction. She talks about how many AI algorithms have opinions embedded deep inside the code, very often not transparent to those people who are impacted by these decisions. And that's a problem. We need to create more transparency in terms of how these algorithms are working. If a doctor is going to be told by an AI algorithm that he or she should amputate the leg of a patient, they're not gonna make this action without understanding why. Humans need to understand why. There needs to be transparency. So explainable artificial intelligence is very important. We need to be able to audit the algorithms used for credit rating models to make sure that there's no inherent bias against certain populations within our communities. The bottom line is that there's good news and bad news. Let's start with the bad news. AI algorithms are very good at essentially recreating the intelligence of the humans that they're meant to mimic. But that bad news includes also the bias. So they create the intelligence, but they also recreate the bias. The good news is bias can be understood. We can measure and monitor for bias in the algorithms that we use. There are techniques that we can use to audit the data that are fed in as training sets to these AI algorithms to make sure that we reduce or eliminate as much as possible the inherent bias in our algorithms. When you think about how to use AI, if you want to be successful, do not try to use AI for broad decision making. Generalized ability to reason and think is very far away for AI algorithms. If you want to be successful, use NAI, narrow AI, very targeted for tactical operational decisions. The AI algorithms can learn very fast, as I pointed out earlier, but in only very narrow domains. The last thought that I want to leave you with is over the next decade, artificial intelligence is not going to replace managers. But managers who use artificial intelligence will replace those that don't. Our next speaker will tell us about the successful implementation of artificial intelligence in Russia using the example of SARS transformation from Russia's leading bank to a high-tech digital company. Please welcome First Deputy Chairman of the Executive Board of Serbank, Alexander Vedikin. I would like to thank the organizers, Rosatom Forbes High School Economics University, for the professional organization of the event. In 2018, we have started the process of AI transformation of the company with creating the environment for transformation, including AI enablers and AI platforms. In 2019, it means going AI first, designing key products embedded in AI platforms and growing effect of AI on the bank, uh, in terms of PNL for sure. 
In 2020, we focused on implementing uh, AI in each and every process uh, of the whole Sberbank ecosystem. Actually, in 2020, we will gain more than uh, 60 billion rubles additional income only thanks to AI-based uh, algorithms. Uh, so uh, our aim uh, in perspective 2023 is to have nearly 100% of pro products and processes AI-based. I think it's achievable. Uh, now we have a range of 30% to 70% AI-based processes depending on the area. It's much higher in risk management and still a little lower in front office operations. AI in the ecosystem let us provide the best customer experience with AI uh, with the greatest efficiency for the company. For example, the AI robot lawyer decreases a time of granting of credit uh, to just seven minutes, while the uh, AI robot operator does about 140,000 calls every day and considerably cuts the bank costs uh, for client communication. Let me give you a few examples of some new R&D AI products we services uh, that we implemented. Uh, for instance, um, our data science team uh, has developed a smart management support system. Uh, we call it Digital Manager uh, to automate uh, approximately 50 to, from 50 to 70 percent of decisions for middle management with the following functionality. Decision support prioritization of information flow, routine automation, cognitive disruption prevention, integration of electronic document, HR platform, smart calendar, etc. Auto summarization of letters, that's really important for managers. Meeting minutes, um, voice ready meeting transcription. As another example, we actively use graph platform, such uh, components as analytics tools for fraud detection, holding companies, graph embeddings of individual and corporate clients, uh, graph neural network pipelines, uh, tool to construct uh, the knowledge graph for Q&A system, and it led us uh, I, um, to have some, so to say, united knowledge graph about uh, clients and generally speaking about the world. Uh, we believe in the global advantages of AI for commercial organizations um, and the whole humankind. AI technologies could empower us to create AI native companies that we are not only providing the best services for clients, but also allow us to solve key social challenges such as providing equal opportunities in healthcare and education and fighting ecological problems at the same time making our life better and improving people's quality of life. Managing a modern commercial company implies not only focusing on commercial results but also making the world a better place, meaning fighting social, ecological and other challenges of humankind. AI technologies could really help to address such challenges as never ever before. We already focused on applying AI for good um, of the humanity. AI for good projects help to reduce fears and worries of people uh, regarding AI as well as solve real life problems. We distinguish some initiatives aimed at developing AI technologies into a separate stream, AI for good. That is an integral part of the ESG agenda. We have launched the following projects in the sphere of healthcare and ecology. AI solutions for classification of forest fires according to satellite area. Uh, AI diagnosis of COVID uh, lesions relying on CT studies. AI based brain blood stroke detection. AI predicting the probability of developing communications for patients with pneumonia based uh, detection and classification of breast cancer using radiography imaging detection of health problems based on halter monitoring of electrocardiogram. This year, during the largest Russian conference on AI, AI Journey 2020, we are going to launch the series of international hackathons, AI decoding of the manuscripts of Peter the Great, AI forecasting of river flooding and open competition uh, AI for humanities. Participants get access to the latest technologies in the sphere of neural language understanding and processing and uh, to the most powerful supercomputer in Russia, Christofari. 
Other Russian companies also promote such type of projects. For example, the Beeline company together with search and rescue team Lisa Allard has launched an AI service for location of the people gone missing based on the satellite photos. AI technologies open up new opportunities for the humankind. AI could allow us to solve key social challenges under the UN Sustainable Development Goals, such as equal opportunities in healthcare and education, as well as fighting ecological problems. Experience of fight against COVID has shown great importance of AI technologies and rising demand for its use for social good. However, there are some doubts um, in the society about the effects of such modern technologies as AI. Trust to AI technologies is still being formed. Uh, there are still many talks about risk of AI. That's why together we should learn how to manage the key risks um, of the development of uh, AI technologies such as digital divide and social discrimination, loss of control of AI systems and possible harm to a child, incomprehension of AI technologies and the unpredictability. Not enough consistency and security of AI decision support systems. Using AI for bad reasons, uh, like manipulating of public opinion, especially among young people. But these are all risks that could be managed if we work together. That's why it is important to find balance between re restrictive measures and uh, incentive-based international regulation for AI development. And this is why it is uh, also essential for large companies to be at the forefront of promoting AI ethical principles. For organizations, going AI native and using AI technologies is essential, not uh, to just adapt ethical principles of AI, but also ensure that ethics is in the DNA itself of AI technologies. That's why we are working on our own AI ethic corporate principles to adapt uh, in the nearest future. We believe uh, it is important to implement and follow the key basic principles of uh, the AI technologies developing, uh, such as secure AI, it means uh, great attention to risks of applying AI, all uh, the adjacent risk uh, and dangers should be controlled as uh, scrutions as possible. Fair AI. AI technologies are applied fairly on equal terms for everyone. We work to exclude any uh, prejudice against clients um, or employees in the work of AI systems. A responsible AI, applying AI in the interest of clients and ensuring the confidentiality. Explainable AI, systems and uh, data science models uh, deliver accompanying evidence of reasons for all outputs, providing explanations that are understandable to individual users. AI systems only operates under conditions for which it was designed. Reliable AI, AI that is behaving consistently as expected. Our team even participates in the various international committees and task forces on AI to promote international incentive-based regulation of ethical AI, for example, UNESCO or Council of Europe. So AI and ethical principles is really, really important nowadays for us, and I'm sure that this is really important for all organizations around the world. Thank you to our speaker for his presentation and invaluable experience. Next up, we have a man known for his collaboration projects with multinational companies such as Microsoft, Ford, Huawei, Ogilvy, Marriott, Burger King, and Bank of Silicon Valley. He will continue to elaborate on the topic of artificial intelligence. Please welcome the marketing consultant for the World Communication Forum in Davos, blogger, philanthropist, and traveler, Sean Gardner. Hi, uh, my name is Sean Gardner. I am a Forbes uh, social media influencer, uh, digital marketer, and an AI specialist. Uh, I do research on AI, uh, consult companies on the best ways that they can implement, um, I guess you would call them, um, different AI tools uh, for their business. So 
Uh, very excited to be here. Uh, thank you so much uh, for coming. Uh, I know this is a very important topic, artificial intelligence. And I don't want to overhype it at all, but for sure, AI is a very important topic that governments, companies um, of every size uh, are grappling with. The term artificial intelligence uh, first um, was coined by John McCarthy uh, in the 1950s at the very first academic conference on this particular topic of AI. And uh, AI since that time has, you know, had some very important milestones, right? We talk about chatbots right now. Well, chatbots, of course, occurred in 1964. They just picked up steam. Um, also, uh, the use of neural networks to steer self-driving cars, uh, that was 1989. And of course, uh, the AI-infused Roomba, which of course is the, you know, the uh, autonomous robotic vacuum cleaner. That was 2002. Um, but this past decade was interesting, right? Uh, you saw the you saw humans losing to AI on Jeopardy, uh, the television show Jeopardy, and you saw uh, a human losing uh, to an AI during the very difficult, a uh, very popular board game uh, in China. Uh, this has helped to really create a kind of permanent conversation around AI and and how it can impact uh, society. Uh, but we already use AI, right? Uh, navigation apps, um, ride sharing apps, um, music and video streaming services, uh, virtual assistants, uh, and more. Um, but, you know, I believe any big discussion about AI, right? It's more recent future, which we're dealing with here, uh, and also it's very promising future has to take into account how it was first viewed uh, in the ancient world. So, of course, Pamela McCordick has a very interesting book called Machines Who Think. This is from 1979, groundbreaking book. And in it, she's talking about how artificial intelligence, right, uh, is this the, the thought of it, right, is something that has pervaded Western intellectual thought for quite a while. Um, then, of course, Adrian uh, Mayer's book, God and Robots, she's talking about like, you know, crewless and these, these, um, these ships that are autonomous. Uh, very interesting, and that's from the Odyssey. We all remember the Odyssey in, in high school having to do, you know, reports on it. But then also she talks about, you know, in ancient literature, uh, things like, you know, drone-like arrows and, and self-driving cauldrons. Um, so yes, even thousands of years ago, humans, right, societies were thinking about, um, a human uh, machine collaboration and what that could mean for the future. Uh, so it's no surprise, right, that that in this age of mind numbing innovation, you know, you go to bed with an AI uh, story, wake up with an AI story. This seems to be, if not necessarily every day or every week, then certainly every month, something big is happening in this 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 area. And, um, and so that's essentially why AI is capturing our imagination the way, you know, the way it is. Um, but no matter what country I speak in, right? I've sp spoken in 29 countries since uh, 2014. And uh, I can tell you that I can speak on social media, right? Digital marketing, uh, travel as it intersects with digital marketing and social media. And somebody will always weave in a question about AI. So that shows you really how important this topic is, whether it's, you know, the promise of it, the fear of it, you name it. Um, it is the hot topic of the moment. And in industry after industry after industry, right, it's something that people are talking about, they're, they're, they're thinking about how they can use it. But what people are most interested in, I find, is this conversation around how it can be used for the social good. So, for example, the United Nations has this list of, of ways that um, uh, artificial intelligence can positively impact, you know, our societies. So, for example, AI can map poverty from space. This is true. And that can enable real-time allocation. It can analyze vast quantities of healthcare data 
Uh, and of course, that can lead to scientific breakthroughs. It can help, you know, scientists identify diseases. Uh, it can impact classrooms. And I know for some reason it's impacting classrooms right now during this global pandemic, the quarantine. Um, but of course, over the long haul, it can individualize learning and it can provide virtual mentors. It can drive a balanced hiring practice, say, for example, at a company and, and help to identify racial and, and uh, gender inequity, if you will. Uh, it can capture, uh, it can actually you know, provide some, in, some, excuse me, improve energy capture, uh, lowering the cost of solar power. Um, it can add more dimension to something like urban planning. And of course, when that's the case, um, it can make cities smarter, which is, which is the case now, and more sustainable, which of course is the overarching goal um, that, that we're talking about right now on this, this global stage, how to make cities not just smarter, but more sustainable. And of course, last but not least, AI can predict and identify optimal production um, levels and, and reduce waste. Um, beyond the social good though, right? Uh, AI is being used by national and local governments in something as simple as, say, the courtroom. In Estonia, right, it's being used for mostly small claims court, uh, cases. However, in San Francisco, in the United States, it's being used to neutralize and to root out bias. Um, how can we get more people around the world? involved in AI, you know, to understand how it's impacting our lives. Well, I think governments have to do more than they're doing right now, all right? Um, what needs to happen is I think government after government after government needs to get serious about mandating that first and second graders start learning about this. We need to start that young um, because certain, certainly, you know, AI is going to be a part of what they call the future of work. The other thing is provide incentives and tax breaks, if you will, for citizens who are trying to get re-educated and recertified so that their skills come in line with jobs that will definitely require an AI orientation. No one has to get left behind when it comes to AI, not one single citizen. Um, but when it comes to AI, right, AI um, for education, AI uh, for a, maybe a, it can even be AI ethics, which is a growing field and it's going to be a pretty hot field uh, pretty soon. No matter what area it is that AI is intersecting with, um, we have to get serious about how this is impacting our lives. And so the continents, the countries, the communities and the companies that jump on this right now will be the ones that benefit from it tomorrow and over the long haul. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. We're going to continue to talk about artificial intelligence and explore this topic from different points of view. What technological frontiers is industrial AI facing? What are some of the challenges that are preventing the full potential of high technology from being fully realized? What are the new ethics of the relationship between humankind and artificial intelligence? And how is technology helping us to connect people all over the world and improve living standards on a global scale? We are delighted to introduce the Chief Executive Director at CIFRAM, Boris Mekhevnin, who will tell us all about it. Dear colleagues, it is an honor to be a speaker at the Global Impact Conference. Today, we are discussing the topic of artificial intelligence, its inner workings and expectations we have for the results as development for the produce in the future. Today, I would like you to introduce 10 key aspects that will help you understand the approach that Rosatom has to artificial intelligence. Many industries try and work on integrating AI-powered solutions and services into their business processes. Smart factories with intelligent adaptive production lines give us a glimpse of the shape of the things to come. Artificial intelligence is no longer a purely theoretical matter for scientists and programmers to try and crack. 
It's major industrial technologies we're talking about. Technologies that are becoming profitable. These are the things I would like to discuss today. One, scaling. The Global Impact Conference strives to tackle emerging challenges we find ourselves dealing with. My colleagues and I are part of Rosatom digitization team. One of the most pressing issues we have on our hands is figuring out how to scale a certain digital technology in particular and a variety of others in general. Rosatom is one of the technology leaders in the current market. We are a multi-industry corporate group with assets in the energy, mechanical engineering and the construction industries that employs more than two, uh, 250,000 people and 400 enterprises. Given the sheer scale we operate, it is only natural we are always looking for ways to scale best practices and results when it comes to the use of artificial intelligence and other digital technologies. Two, systematic approach. At Rosatom, the way we look at digital technologies is through the lens of the strategic goals and core corporate values, the latter of which includes safety, accountability, efficiency, striving to always be one step ahead, respect to people, society, partners, and team spirit. Since 2018, Rosatom has been implementing a unified digital strategy in three main areas. One, actively supporting the digitalization of the Russian economy. Two, ensuring digitalization of the Russian nuclear industry through implementation of various projects. Three, actively creating our own digital solutions that can be used in other industries and bringing them to the market. A1 is one of the most important points in our technology portfolio today. Moreover, this technology is used in almost all areas of our digital strategy. 3. Result-oriented approach. There is an ever-increasing number of ways for artificial intelligence technologies to intervene with both industrial and business processes. Recently, we summarized the results of the pilot run of a predictive analytics systems carried out on the Novovoronish NPP. Our main goal was to develop a prototype predictive analytics system that could further boost the equipment reliability. Having completed the project, we are now convinced that the use of such systems on the industrial scale is, in fact, significantly beneficial economically. The Rosatom Steel Company is highly engaged in testing and implementing AI-based solutions. One of its projects aims to develop an equipment operations predictive monitoring system. It will help predict possible shutdowns and failures, project quality of, pro uh, project quality of products, thus reducing costs and increase the output volume. This is just one such initiative we have at Rosatom. We actively explore using AI to optimize the management system too automating the process of taking minutes of the meetings using a quickly learning AI-based speech recognition system is one of such examples. We hope to soon see such automatic secretary as an essential part of actual meetings, able to recognize different people's voices and prepare minutes. Augmenting Rosatom products with the new and unique digital features is an important part of our work with digital technologies in general and AI in particular. We expand this mindset not only on simpler products, but on such a complex facilities as nuclear power plants as well. It helps us to add value to offers we present our customers, which make our business more relevant and competitive on the global market, expand our communication and sales network, and ensure the transition to advanced business models. Today's clients expect smart, intelligent products and services wherever they go. The use of AI opens new prospects for the modern industry. 4. R&D and Ecosystem Rosatom conducts a lot of R&D projects aiming to improve AI technologies. We are not trying to reinvent the bicycle and focus on creating local and focused competence hubs able to solve problems unique to the nuclear industry using artificial intelligence.
Rosatom is also developing a partner ecosystem consisting of a variety of participants. We actively interact with leading universities, R&D centers, private and public companies and corporations, startups and the innovation community, both in Russia and abroad. We look forward to equal and economically feasible interaction with partners that will end up being a win-win scenario for everyone involved. We firmly believe that such cooperation is one of the most promising formats for the further development of digital technologies. 5. New Products and AI Artificial intelligence is the becoming an important part of new digital R&D and the services that Rosatom is bringing to the open market. Here is one of such examples. Some time ago, the fuel group Rosatom subsidiaries created a service that provides automates procurement through integration of AI and robotic process automation technologies. Recently, we brought this service and product to the open market. Now, other Russian enterprises can use this uh, product for procurement, reaping the reward of improved economic performance. 6. AI New Opportunities for Global Projects Dear colleagues, as you probably know, Rosatom is the Russia's national infrastructure operator for the Northern Sea Road. The Northern Sea Road is the shortest logistic route between the European part of Russia and the Far East, which is attracting ever more attention from the international businesses. Rosatom works on implementing AI-based digital services that will improve the efficiency of ship route planning with account for ice conditions and meteorological data, as well as help increase cargo traffic and reduce costs. This is one of those cases when AI does not simply solve isolated problems, but contributes to the development of international logistics in a huge way. 7. Digital Culture when it comes to AI, Rosatom also focuses on helping its partners figure out where exactly they need such technologies and solutions. There are many misconceptions around artificial intelligence. Some of them give you a distorted idea of what this technology is capable of. It is important to discuss the responsibility of the global tech community and the business for how uh, well, we inform the society about modern technologies. This is why Rosatom pays great attention to the development of a new digital culture in the nuclear industry. This effort includes creating and training materials and courses and making them available for employees. Such materials can serve as a guide that helps to confidently navigate them in the new cyber-physical world. 8. Technology Integration AI is not the only technology with powerful potential for the global industry. This is precisely why we do a lot of work to integrate various digital technologies, complementing each other and ensuring the best result. Together with our partners, we are working on adding the unique features on artificial intelligence, virtual and augmented reality, and the modern solution of applying clean thinking to the smart cities. We do it to ensure development of the various territories, increase the efficiency of municipal management and raising the standards of living. And of course, we pay the uh, utmost attention to the development of modern platforms for working with data and knowledge. Data is becoming the raw material, the fuel for the next generation of the intelligent business and management systems. But even more valuable is the knowledge that is accumulating today by enterprises in the digital format and who can serve as the basis for AI uh, added creation of the effective systems. What's the next big thing? Nine. Rosatom is responsible for the implementation of the large-scale state project to create a Russian quantum computer. The quantum computer is not just a few generation of computing devices. This is the main expected global breakthrough in the next decade in the field of digitalization. We expect that thanks to the use of quantum effects, such computing systems will effectively solve the most complex problems. For example, in the field of modeling the behavior of the complex molecules when developing the new drugs and materials, as well as in logistics and when working with the big data, 
We understand that in order to build a fully fledged working quantum computing system, it is necessary to build a comprehensive stack of solutions from physical qubits, control systems, and the operating system to logical programming languages, applications, and the cloud platform. Therefore, our SATOM's efforts are aimed at creating both quantum hardware and software. The, road, uh, the roadmap for the development of the quantum computing that is being implemented by Rosatom includes the formation of the scientific and technological ecosystem for the development of the quantum computing. And one of the uh, central areas of this work is R&D. We want to, uh, to teach quantum computing to work on the solving really big and significant problems. The current generation of AI systems are not yet capable of solving creating problems. But we believe that unique prospects for the use of quantum computers are opening up in the field of artificial intelligence. First of all, due to the unattainable speed of the analysis of the initial data and the enumeration of various independencies in the process of searching for the patterns. A very puzzling professional challenge is the answer to the question of whenever quantum computers can radically change the situation and open the way for us to use AI that will create the new meanings. Make discoveries. Become a like human brain. But this is the opportunity for making fiction into reality. Rosatom considers this challenge one of the most promising. If we can mix these technologies, we will probably get the next big thing in a digital technology. Then, the final one, AI ethics. Dear colleagues, in conclusion, I would like to say a few words about the ethics code for technology development. Rosatom's mission is for the achievements of the nuclear science and technology to serve the prosperity of the society. Today, Large companies are responsible not only for the products they create, but also for the impact on the environment, for maintaining and improving the standards of living and the well-being of their employees and their families. Especially high standards are set for global and innovative companies. Modern AI-based solutions are increasingly empowered to make independent decisions. Therefore, one of our most important tasks is to ensure the safety and predictability of the use of such technologies. We believe that in the modern digital production, people and machines must efficiently interact and work together. That is why in the digital domain, we are committed to the basic principle. Systems are to assist people, not vice versa. Thank you very much for your attention.